talk about information flow studies. You see three kind of paradigmatic way that, ways that information flows in organization. In the background of each of these pictures is an organizational chart. And an organizational chart, if you haven't seen it before, it says, here's the person at the top of the company. Here's all the people that report to that person. Here's all the people that report to that sub person. Here's all the people that report to the sub sub person, right? So that's the organizational structure from a hierarchical standpoint, from a sort of an outline or a table of contents of all the people in the organization. We'll talk much more about that later on. What I want you to see right now is that superimposed on that org chart, on that um, standard sort of view of the organization, are some arrows that talk about different ways that information can flow based on social relationships. When it flows from the top down, it's flowing down hierarchically from the people higher up in the organization to the people lower down in the organization. Higher up meaning at a more global scope in the organization, lower down meaning at a more local scope in the organization. So the information flow in this case is top down. On the other hand, we can have information flowing from the bottom up. Top down might mean the president of the company makes an announcement, we're going in this different strategic direction, and that information he gives or she gives to um, her lieutenants, her lieutenants give it to her lieutenants, her lieutenants give it to her lieutenants until it bubbles down through the whole organization. Or you can have bottom up, where someone, for example, someone on the phone says, uh-oh, um, you know, we have, this, we have a problem with our software. It's, it's crashing when you run it in this and that sort of configuration. And they tell their manager, who tells their manager, who tells their manager, and the information flows back up through the organization, and that's the difference between a top-down flow and a bottom-up flow. There can also be flow via those social hubs. So the, the, the third diagram up in the corner here shows a person who happens to be highly connected. Now, if I looked at this diagram, I'd say they're an isolate, right, from our, from our vocabulary before. They're only connected to the rest of the organization by one strand. Well, that shows you that this, are, that this diagram actually doesn't really tell the story. Classic social hub person inside of an organization is an administrator or a secretary or a receptionist or someone like that who interacts with a whole lot of people. And all you have to do to get the message out in the entire organization is tell that one person as far as this view, this hierarchical view of the organization is concerned, they're not connected. But if you looked at their social graph inside the organization, you'd see that they're totally connected to all sorts of people. And that when they know something, they spread it out to all of those other people um, uh, very quickly. So these three, kinds of, these three kinds of flows in organizations, oftentimes when we're trying to make something happen in an organization, change to happen in an organization, or analyzing the way an organization uses information so that we can best present it or best distribute it, we'll look at these three different models and, and say which is the right way to go about it. Now, not that these are the only three models, but what I want to show you is that they imply different sorts of social networks. We have this hierarchical social network, and the bottom up and the top down are all about the hierarchical social network. And then we have the interpersonal social network that the third diagram talks about. So social networks are also good for allowing us to understand how information flows. Information flows through social networks, and as you can see from these diagrams, there's not only one social network, there are many social networks all imposed upon each other simultaneously. And I think you probably know that from your life. You have a school social network, you have a neighborhood social network, you maybe have a relative social network, and those social networks overlap. Okay, 